everybody welcome back this is john john the wise and i have another cyberpunk video for you guys this time this is going to be the first time i'm ever painting miniatures on this channel as combat zone the cyberpunk red skirmish game is coming out from monster fight club i thought i would get ahead of it and just start painting some minis now i would like to let you guys know that this is my first time doing anything like this so please bear with me as i get through the bugs in this video we are going to be showing you guys i am going to be showing you guys how to paint these two models we have zoner one and zoner two from the monster fight club line i'm going to show you guys how to paint them in two different techniques one called the contrast method and the other one which i dub the traditional method let's get into what I mean by the traditional. Traditionally, you take a base paint like this Mephiston red here, and that is going to be the first layer that you put onto your miniature, uh, onto a, a part of your miniature. Then once you're done with putting that first layer, you shade that first layer with something like this Nuln Oil from the Citadel brand, which by the way, I'll be using Citadel brand for my most of my videos, which are the Warhammer brand. And after you put the shade, you're gonna come in with some highlight of a lighter red which this one is evil sun's scarlet and that is a lighter red to the mephiston one and basically those three are exactly the traditional method this is contrast paint and supposedly contrast paint is supposed to do all three of those things in one instead of the traditional method you'll be using contrast paints to do everything so the idea is when you're painting your miniatures you want to work from dark to light so your first layer will be a dark layer and as you go on and on with your shading and your highlights it'll go up to a lighter portion to the higher raised up areas of the model well contrast paint claims to be able to do all three of those things of the traditional painting method all in one and the traditional painting method is a little bit more work but sometimes the results are a little bit better it all depends on what you think i'm going to show you guys both ways to do it just so you can decide for yourselves for this model here, I'm going to be using the contrast method exclusively and for the pants and the jacket and everything, that's all going to be contrast. And for this other model, for the pants and the jacket, I'm going to be using the traditional method and let's get into it. So here is my workstation here. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight on how I'm doing things. These are my brushes. On the right hand side, these are my dry brushes. Two of them are makeup brushes that I stole from my wife. And then that is more of a traditional dry brush. I, I don't care about these brushes. I don't care what happens to them. But these black brushes that you guys see, these three black brushes are very important to me. I'm taking care of them as I paint. I'm making sure paint does not get into the fennel, which is the end right where the the paint brush meets that metal part you don't want any any paint in there because it dries up and it frays and then this is another brush that i do not care about i'm going to be using this brush to take paint out of my pot put it onto my wet palette and i really don't care what happens to this brush as well um other than that, here we have my wet palette, and just like I said, I'm going to be taking paint, putting it in that uh, from this brush, putting it onto that wet palette, and there I'll be able to control how much paint is on the brush, and that's probably one of the most important things about painting, is you want to control how much paint you have on your brush, how thin your paints are, and maybe in a later video I'll give you guys some insight on that. I have here my water. I just cut up a water bottle. The reason I did that is because I don't want to mess up my actual cups or mugs in the house and I could just throw this away. I like the ridges. I love running my brush along these ridges to clean it up. And like I said, I'll just throw it away once it gets uh, dirty with all the acrylic paint. And over here, I have my little stand. I just picked up one of my son's toys and I tacked on the models right onto it. It's great for gripping. You can also buy some traditional ones. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this contrast paint called Snake Bite Leather from Citadel, and you're always gonna wanna shake them really, really good. And we are gonna apply this onto the jacket of the model. This is gonna be uh, a leather jacket look. Uh, the, the box 
uh, shows them with like a kind of darker jacket, a black one. But I wanted to try like this brown leather jacket. I think it would look really cool. So we're gonna apply this all over the model. And really what you're trying to do is just move this paint around because it glides. It, it's so easy to paint. And if we take a look at this, uh, you can see that in the recesses of the models, it is dark and on the outside of it, it is lit up, which is exactly what the traditional paint would do. I also did the holster there. So now let's move on to the other model. And with the other model, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some Mornfang Brown, which is the traditional regular base paint of brown. It's the brown that I chose to do for this one. And as you can see, I'm just putting it on there. It's not gonna look as good as the contrast one because I still have to shade it and I still have to highlight it. And after I get that on there, as you can see, it's a little bit dull. All the details and everything have kind of washed out. You can't really see much of the detail on that model because it still needs a lot of work comparatively. Let's take a look at these two models here side by side. As you can see, one of them looks like it's almost done. It's pretty much done, which is a contrast method. And the other one looks like it needs a little bit more work right there. So this is what I mean about the differences in how contrast paint can be much easier to work with than the traditional method. So. Let's move on to shading the jacket, which is the next step of the traditional method. I'm taking null noil. I decided last minute actually that I'm going to, instead of use null noil, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade, which is another shade. And this is more of a brown shade. And I think it actually will go really well with the brown leather jacket. So I decided to use that one instead. And boy, am I glad I did that because it ended up being really, really nice on the model. And you're just gonna apply this all over the jacket. And what you really wanna do is you wanna make sure that it doesn't pull too much. And what I do uh, later on is after I've added the shade is I come with a dry brush uh, I dried that same brush and I'm just going over the model and picking up any of the pooled areas of the shade because I don't want it to pull up too much. So now what I'm doing is a dry brushing technique. I took one of my wife's uh, makeup brushes and what you want to do is get most of the paint off of there. And I went with a lighter brown, which is XV88 is what it's called. And I'm just going over lightly tapping the raised areas on this model. And it's a little bit hard to tell, but more of the detail has popped out as a lighter brown is touching those edged areas as if the light is touching that jacket. And that's why those areas are brighter. And that's what you want. You want contrast in paint. And now I basically just did the same thing. Once that no, the Agrax Earthshade has dried, I'm doing the same thing on this other model with the XV88. I'm dry brushing on there. And now this is looking like more of a finished product. And you can see I got a bunch of paint all over the model, which is fine. We're just gonna come back and touch it up later. It, it's all good. Now, I'm taking Griff Hound Orange, which is another contrast paint, and I'm going to be doing the orange onto this beanie over here. I use a contrast paint for this one because that's the technique that I'm using. And I actually honestly used it for the other one as well because orange is just notoriously difficult to work with. Then here's Telasidar Blue, I believe it is called. This contrast paint is great for the jeans. I'm doing the same thing uh, as the jacket. I'm just putting it liberally all over the jeans. Any mistakes I make, I will come back and fix it later on. And you just wanna apply it on there, move it around, and it just glides onto the model. Now it's already starting to look pretty good as the orange and the blue on the jeans are starting to dry up. You can see the recessed areas are darker without any shading on it. And now I'm gonna take Flesh Terror Red, which is another contrast paint, and I'm gonna be coloring the inside shirt with that. And here it is with the contrast paint on there. It just needs a little bit more touching up. And I mean, this model is pretty much done. That's the great way, great thing about using contrast paints is it does so much work for you. Here I am with Black Templar, which is a black contrast paint. And I'm doing that for the gloves and the boots and, and other details like that. And uh, it, this is honestly one of my favorite black paints to use. So there you go. Here is most of the model pretty much done. 
just by applying one layer of contrast paint throughout the entire model, which is insane. I mean, if you think about it. Here I am touching up the model with some more highlights. As I said, I've made a mess. So here I am making sure that the reds are where they're supposed to be. The browns are supposed to be brown where they're supposed to be. And I'm doing some thicker highlights. While dry brushing does a great job, the thicker highlights are actually much more important. Here, here I am doing light dry brushing, controlled dry brushing. And here it is. This is the model pretty much done. It's done. Uh, I mean, I can do some little things here and there, but this model looks amazing just from using one layer of contrast paint throughout the entire model and one highlight on the leather jacket. I haven't even highlighted the shirt or anything yet. All right, let's continue with this model over here. We still have a lot of work to do on it. So what I did is I took some Griff Hound Orange, the same contrast paint that I used for the beanie on the other model. And the reason I'm doing this is because, like I said, orange is notoriously hard to work with, any of those high pigment colors. So I've decided to use the contrast paint and I'm using black contrast, the black Templar for the, the weapon. And like I said, I could be using the traditional method and highlighting and shading, but why do all that work? All right, so let's get to the jeans. The jeans I'm gonna be doing in the traditional method using this techless blue as the first layer, and then this Lothurn blue as the highlight with Nuln oil in between as the shade. Now, I will admit, after I put this techless blue and then I put the Nuln oil on, I decided that I liked the way it looked without any highlights necessary. So here it is with the techless blue on first. Then I came back, I took some lead belcher, which is a silver base, and I'm going to do the silver details on the knee pads there. And with these two together on the model, I can now start putting on the Nuln oil. And unlike Agrax Earthshade, which I used for, uh, oh, and here's some Flesh Terror Red, of course, for the shirt and for the gloves. I wanted to do something other than black to contrast from the weapon. In and, and, and the other model. So when I put this Nuln oil on, the reason I use Nuln oil instead of Agrax Earthshade is because I wanted a black recess. I don't want any brown tint on this color. So the black is perfect. And as you can see, it's in there. I made sure it didn't pool too much. I came back with a dry brush. This is my brush dry, picking up any of the excess Nuln oil in the recessed areas. And here it is, guys. This is the model done, the contrast method model. I went and did some Evil Sun Scarlet, the lighter red highlights. And then here's the other model completely done in the traditional method. And as you can see, they both look really good. They both took pretty much the same amount of work to do. And I highly recommend that you guys try either one yourselves. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one with hopefully a better view, better quality, and better everything. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you on the next one.